Welcome back to day 3 of random math stuff, and no, I have not fixed my pen tablet. So today I noticed something interesting. If you wanted to make a paper cube, you'd probably cut out this shape then fold it up into a cube. It turns out that there are 10 other shapes that can also fold up into cubes, so 11 total. But that's not the interesting part. There are also exactly 11 nets, that's what we call them, that fold up into octahedrons. The numbers match up for some reason. And it keeps going. There are 43,380 icosahedron nets, and also 43,380 dodecahedron nets. That can't be a coincidence. There's probably something going on here, and I'm trying to figure it out, but as you saw from the title of the video, I have no idea why this is happening. But here's my progress on the question. If you look closely at both of these pairs, you might notice that each polyhedron is the dual of the other. What does that mean? If you take the center of each cube face and connect them up, you get an octahedron. And if you take the center of each octahedron face and connect those up, you get a cube. They're sort of like brothers. And dual polyhedra have a lot of things in common, but I won't go into that. You just need to know that each polyhedron has a counterpart. So yeah, each pair of duals has the same number of nets, which makes sense. I mean, they have all these other things in common. But the problem is that this pattern completely breaks. A triangular prism has 9 nets, but its dual, this double tetrahedron thingy, only has 8. Or at least I think it does, I may have miscounted, but I don't have any way to check, I couldn't find the number of nets online. Anyway, right now my only lead is to try and find a 1 to 1 correspondence. What that is, is a way to match cube nets to octahedron nets like this. If we can match all the cube nets to one octahedron net each, then we'll know that there's the same number of both. Of course, we could just randomly match them up, but then we aren't going to be able to do the same thing to icosahedrons and dodecahedrons, because we sure as hell are not going to manually match up 43,000 nets. So what we want is to find some sort of matching rule that can be extended to 43,000 nets. Oh, what would that look like? I don't know, do I? If I did, I have the solution to the problem. Anyway, I'm not going to search up the solution because I feel like there's a really short, elegant proof and I want to figure that out myself. Okay, I don't want to leave you on a cliffhanger this video, so here's a short little puzzle I made up. Look at the corner of this cube. See how all three of the angles are 90 degrees? I want to change that, but I still want to keep all three angles the same. So for example, in this configuration, all three angles are 60 degrees. The question is, what is the maximum angle that you can have? As you think about that, some stuff about the channel. I missed the daily upload yesterday, and now I'm starting to realize that a video every day is not going to be possible. But I'll continue making these types of videos because they're pretty fun to make. And I'll keep making the two truths and a lie videos as well, those just take a lot more time to finish. Alright, back to the problem. The answer is 120 degrees. To figure this out, let's start with 0 degrees and work our way up. If all three angles are 0, then that means that all three lines are pointing the same way. As we increase the angle, the lines spread out like the legs of a tripod. We can keep spreading them out until the tripod is completely flat, where all three angles will measure 120 degrees. Past this point, the tripod becomes inverted, the angle starts decreasing, so 120 degrees is the maximum. Well, that's all I have today. I'll give you an update if I figure out the cube octahedron thing, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.